I'm Josh Bomar with Bomar Bowhunting, and we are starting a new YouTube series called The Bomar Breakdown, where we break down our most iconic bow hunts. On this week's episode, we are going to break down one of my favorite deer of all time, which is this big monster double drop time buck I killed in Ohio back in 2014. Now, honestly, I'm really embarrassed about the production quality of this hunt because this was way back when we were first starting and I had a really crappy camera. I was just self-filming. Honestly, I didn't tell a story great about this deer. I didn't show the history, all the work and the effort it went into to getting this buck on camera. I just started with him right in the field. So as embarrassed as I am, let's play the footage. So as you guys can tell, this is top level production here. I'm talking everything is perfect. I'm just kidding, it's obviously not. But guys, this is also a really good point for you to know you don't have to be great to start, you just have to start. So I think that's actually a quote. You don't have to start to be great, but you, you, have, to, great. you have to be great to start? No, 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 that's not good. That's not it, let's yeah, cut. You don't have to. You don't have to start great, but to be great, you have to start. I think that's the quote. Yeah, that's inspiring. Not so much, sorry. All right, back to the, back to the breakdown. So, <laughs> this buck is awesome. He's one of my favorite deer of all time. It's so funny because building up to this season, I was actually practicing on a Delta McKenzie target called like the zombie deer or dead deer or whatever. And it was a perfect typical with matching drops with one red eye. It was like a zombie deer. And so I just envisioned this deer all summer long practicing and shooting this deer. And as by the grace of God, by somehow the law of attraction, I get a deer that literally mimicked that deer almost to an exact T. And it's kind of funny and kind of creepy at the same time, but still pretty cool. Little backstory on this buck. You know, Sarah and I were hunting in Kentucky and trying to get our first velvet buck. We didn't have any luck, but that trip was one of my favorite trips of all time because I met one of my best friends of all time, Jimmy Smith. Him and I were both having a bad hunt, but we got along really well. And he was one of the first people that I talked to that said marriage was one of the greatest things in the whole world because Sarah and I were actually thinking about getting married. And so that was what was super cool. He encouraged it. And so him and I became great friends over the next year. Well, he told me something that was kind of interesting. He said, Josh, he's like, I would love for you to come down and hunt with me. And you've all had those friends. Oh yeah, I'm sure you made it. You know, he's like, I'm serious. I want you to come down and hunt me. I got a couple properties I don't hunt that I think I can get you permission on. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm telling you, it's a two and a half hour drive because it was way down in Southern Ohio. We lived up in Northern Ohio, like actually kind of more central in Columbus area. And I said, I would make the drive. If you can get me a farm, any farm, don't care. I said, I'll make the drive. He's like, well, I know a farmer, he owes me a favor. So calls up this guy. And the guy says, well, I have people that hunt my property a lot, actually. I got X, Y, and Z that hunt it. I'm like, does, does any of them bow hunt? He's like, well, let me, my one, my one employee bow hunts. He's like, I'll, I'll ask him. And he owned two farms. Well, the guy that worked for him got to pick which farm he wanted, and then I got the, the other farm. So the, the guy picked the farm across the street, so I got the leftover farm, which is where this deer lived. It's kind of funny. And so come to find out, though, Across the street, there was a bean field in early summer. That guy was getting this buck on camera early in the bean field. I had corn on my side. And so he was over there all summer long. Really funny story, actually. This guy takes one of these trail cam photos he had of the deer and goes get it tattooed on his arm. True story. Gets this deer tattooed on his arm and then the deer disappears from him, shows up on our property. So I was driving down there every, it was a two and a half hour drive. I'd drive down there, I'd put cameras out, I would hang tree stands, I'd drive back, drive back down, back and forth, back and forth, all through September and into October. And I didn't get this deer on camera until late October. And he was kind of nocturnal and kind of late, but when he showed up, I mean, my jaw literally hit the ground. I'll never forget this. I was standing in our house and I had a cell cam and it goes off and this deer shows up and I'm just like, 
oh my gosh, I can't believe this. Look at this deer. It just had matching drops, but yet a big typical frame. Even his kickers were matching. I was just like, this was like a dream come true. I'm like, oh my gosh, could you imagine if I got a chance at shooting this buck? I was literally just elated. I immediately wanted to run down there and start hunting him as hard as I could. I mean, that was just like, go hard, go hard, go hard. And I was like, no, 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 I, I have to, to take my time with this deer. And so I just waited and watched and it's killing me because I want to sit in the tree stand. And slowly a nighttime photo, nighttime photo, but it's getting closer and closer to daylight in the morning. And then I looked at the barometric pressure, I looked at the moon phases, I looked at this cold front that was gonna come in and I said, oh my gosh, on this day, I bet you he's gonna break daylight. And I'm like, okay, here we go. And so I was like, should I go hunt? And I, I hesitated, I didn't go because I didn't want to screw it up. And sure enough, he broke daylight. Boom, there he is, bright daylight, right when I thought he would be. And I was like, oh, I should have listened to my gut and went and hunted. And so then I looked and that evening, the wind was gonna be wrong. And I was like, all right, I can't go hunting that evening. And boom, he broke daylight again. I'm just like, oh my gosh. But the next morning, the cold front was still there and the wind was gonna be marginal, not perfect, but I got my butt up in that stand long before daylight. So it's one of those mornings where it's completely frosted on the ground and it's super quiet. I mean, I can hear everything. And it's starting to crack daylight, still pretty dark, honestly. And I literally hear bucks fighting and I'm like, Oh my gosh, it's the double dropper. He's gonna snap off all of his tines. And I'm like, I'm trying to film and you can't hear it on the camera because it's such a crappy camera. I can't even describe to you how old this camera was. It was probably literally from the early 2000s, but it's all I could afford at the time. So I was, I was happy to use it, just happy to capture it on video. Anyway, I hear these bucks fighting and they're fighting and they're going to town and they're like 200 yards away. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like thinking it's him because I could tell his big horns. And so I'm sitting in the tree and I'm just like freaking out, self filming. No one's filming me. I got my little camera right here. I'm ready. And then literally, it was like a scene off a of gladiator. When you're walking through the grass, it was like him coming and he just walking and prancing through king of the mountain, king of this field, he's coming through and all I see is those big old matching drops and my heart is like freaking out. You know, I hadn't killed a deer in quite a few years at this point. And I was just like, oh my gosh, here we go. It'd been, I think three years since I killed a buck. And so I get in position, I'm ready. And I thought he was gonna come out in front of me about 27 yards. I had some feet on the ground, which was totally legal to do in Ohio. And so I'm like, okay, we got some feet on the ground. I thought he was gonna come to that. And then sure enough, he comes in circles to get downwind of the feed and he comes right under the tree at like 14 yards. And I'm so excited. My inner hunter is like, I just got to shoot him right now. And I drew back when he was looking straight ahead, which means I was in his peripheral, just made all the mistakes you could possibly make. So as I'm drawing back, he catches me with his eye and he takes off running, runs out of camera frame and he runs off to my left and kind of behind me. And I was like, oh my gosh. So I jump up out of the stand and I, I literally runs behind this huge wall of brush and I can't see him, but I had my safety harness on. So I literally pull a gymnastic move where I put my foot on the very end of, of, the, of the stand and I lean way out to where my tether on my, my safety harness is holding me from falling out of the tree. And I'm like an acrobatic move where I'm like this and I'm like, I'll twist it out and I barely got in front of the bush and he's quartering away almost butt to me and I was like I could tuck it in there and I'm like leaning out and I go Tish! and you just hear it it just sounds like a two by four hits his deer just bam and it's whack and I'm like oh my gosh I hate him and he runs off it's buried up to the knock and I'm like I'm like oh that was kind of far back I was like was it good was it bad I don't know and I was just like um he was quartering away and it buried up to the knock and he ran off and I didn't see it come out the other side so I'm like okay it's in his cavity and so I instantly am start freaking out because this at the time was the biggest buck of my life and I didn't want to screw it up. You know, this was a dream deer of mine. I always grew up wanting to kill one with double drops. I mean, something about those matching double drops as a kid just fascinated me. And I thought for a split second, I might have screwed this up. So of course, I call my dad. He's kind of my guy I talk to because he's a diehard bow hunter like me. I call him up. I'm like, listen, here's the shot. He's like, man, it sounds good, but you should give him some time just in case you didn't get that long. And I was like, okay. So we gave him four hours. I call my wife. I call Jimmy. Call my buddies. I'm so excited. I like to share the moment with people. And so I call my buddies and we decide to wait four hours. All right, guys. So it. we let him hang out there for about four hours. So we wasn't sure about the shot. So we're just kind of 
a little worried about it, so we're gonna give him a, we gave him four hours, so we're going in after him. We got my good buddy Jimmy and Bobby here, they're gonna be helping us out and tracking it, so wish us luck, here we go. We just wait four hours, we go back, and we go to where I shot, and we start tracking. And I'm like, my heart's kinda like sinking, I'm like, okay, are we gonna find blood? Well, we started finding decent blood, it wasn't easy to follow. We had to kinda lean down and look, and we had our, our friend, one of our friends coming there, my buddy Jimmy was there, Sarah was there, I had a GoPro, running, Sarah was running the camera, and we're just kind of following the blood, and we come to the number one thing you don't want to find tracking a deer, and that's a bloody bed, and that's exactly what we found, and I'm like, oh no, because we might have waited. Uh, honestly, when you find a bloody bed, what happens is they usually bed down, they bleed, they lick their wound clean, and then they get up and leave, and you don't find them. So that's what I was worried about with this buck. And we find this one bed. I'm like, oh my gosh, I thought the shot was better than that. And I couldn't review the footage because I didn't get the hit on camera. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. And my heart is just sinking. My mind's going a million miles an hour. And I'm just looking. Well, right in front of this, the bed we found was another bed. And it was covered in blood. And then another bed and another bed. There was literally four or five beds all within 20 yards. So seeing all these beds was actually really encouraging to me because I knew this deer had to have been dead, being bedding that close to each other. So I'm looking around and I look off to the right and I take one step to this right and I see a buzzard fly up in the middle of the trees. I was like, oh my gosh. I said, I wonder if that's my buck. I'm like, could he have been on my buck? And so I'm just kind of creeping forward and I see where that buzzard was. There was this little dip in the creek and I look and I can see this patch of fur and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's a deer. I can tell it's a deer. And so I get further, that patch of fur turns into a hind quarter, which turns into his chest and literally the head was behind a big tree. I'm like, I'm like, what if it's not my deer? I'm freaking out and I take a step forward and he's laying there and you can just see this big old dropper hanging there. And I was just like, oh my gosh, it's him. And you guys know that experience. You've been there, I'm sure, where you shoot a deer and you have no idea if you get him or not. And of course I was there tracking and it was devastating not finding him right away. And then when you finally do find him, you guys know that feeling inside. It's just incredible. And that's exactly what I felt. And it's just such a relief. And to have my wife there, to have my buddy Jimmy there, and to have my other friend there, it was just awesome. Congratulations, Heck buddy. Heck yeah, Josh. It's a dream come true. Yeah, man. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Wow. Do you want to? You got you got one. And so we pick him up and we're looking at him and we're just like this is he was so much bigger than we thought We thought he would have been in the upper 60s turns out he was a hundred and eighty inch deer He officially scored like 178 like a total monster And I was just the biggest deer in my life at the time and I just couldn't be more grateful picking him up looking at him And it was just so cool to have everybody there and Jimmy was such a great friend I still to this day can't believe it because when I got that deer on camera I I told Jimmy, I said, Jimmy, you got to go hunt this buck because it was just knocking, knocking on the door, getting permission. I didn't lease this property. Other people had permission to hunt this property. A lot of people gun hunted it. I was like, Jimmy, you help me find this buck. I said, why don't you shoot this deer? I said, I'm totally fine with that. You deserve it. Cause it was a dream deer of his too. And being the great friend that he is, he said, no way, man, you've been putting in the work to get this buck. You go shoot him. And uh, so that's exactly what we did. So our friendship has, it's been six years and we're still great friends. And uh, so anyway, this deer was just incredible to say the least. You know, we donated a lot of the meat actually. And uh, it was really cool. It fed tons of people. I mean, hundreds of meals. And this deer went a long ways. And I just couldn't be more grateful to have such a great giant buck. And honestly, guys, looking back on this footage, it's so funny to me because it's just, so bad. <laughs> I just don't even know what else to say. It's just so bad. And yet you guys still loved it, which is pretty cool. So again, if you guys are out there trying to start a YouTube channel, watch this video and you'll be like, this is horrible. I could easily do a better job than that. And you probably could. So again, you just have to start and just, it's never a great time to start. Just start film with what you got, even if it's just your phone. And I had this old camera that was 20 years old or something crazy and it worked. It got the job done. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this first video of our new YouTube series called the Bomar Breakdown, where we break down our most iconic hunts. If you guys haven't done it already, please hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so you're always tuned into our channel. And as always, Sarah and I absolutely love and appreciate all of your support. And thank you guys. We'll see you in the next video.